Hey guys, be sure to stay until the end of this video and then comment down below letting me know which of these nine designs you would most want to see as an enamel pin. The winning design from this poll will become an actual factual hard enamel pin, so your choice matters. And this project depends on you guys, so get on that commenting business because this poll closes on November 15th. Hello, I'm Zakira and welcome back to my channel and October is over! And that also means the end of the Inktobers and the Arttobers and the Drawtobers and whatever other word you want to put in front of Tober, including the challenge I took on this year which I called hashtag Pintober. Zaki, because turns out Pintober is already a thing, <laughs> but it's not for drawing, so I'm, I'm not associated with it. I claim no association. If you've been following me on Instagram or saw any of my recent YouTube community posts, then you already know all about this month-long challenge I took on during October, uh, but for those who aren't versed, those who are not familiar, those who have not licked the scoop, that is probably the weirdest thing I've ever said on this channel. Basically, for the month of October, I decided to take on a special personal project, which was to design 31 enamel pin designs, one for each day of the month, post them on social media, then ask you guys to vote for your favorite designs. And then the most popular design at the end of the month will get made into my very first actual hard enamel pin. Because I have fantasized about the idea of making my own enamel pins for a a long time and I was like hey you know what maybe now is a good time to give it a go why not and why not get you guys involved in the project aka help me make a decision because I am a very indecisive person and I would not have been able to pick a single design to get made if it wasn't for you guys the way I organized the voting system was into weekly polls so at the end of each week I posted a voting poll asking you guys to choose which of the seven designs from that week you would most want to see as an enamel pin my plan was to then take the winning design from each week and put them into one final final poll at the end of the challenge and since there are four weeks technically four and a half weeks but I'll get into that <laughs> there would then be four finalists to pick from sounds great but turns out you guys are pretty indecisive as well. After tallying up all of the votes for each week, I found that the winning designs were won by only like one to three votes. Week three was actually tied completely between first and second place. So there was really this trend of having either two or three pieces each week that stood out the most. So I decided to give all of the most popular designs another chance in the final poll by adding the first and second place winning designs from each week. This ended up making the final poll a lot bigger and probably a lot harder to choose from. But hey, this is, this is Zakura land. We love making things unnecessarily difficult, don't we? So the illustrations you're seeing the process of in this video are those nine finalists consisting of the first and second place designs from each of the four weeks. Don't you love how it took me like three minutes to actually mention what you're seeing in this video? <laughs> I am a fantastic YouTuber. Anyway, so for week one, the winners were Galactic Jellyfish, Helmetfish, and Cosmic Kitty. And it is the only week that has three finalists because second place was tied between two of these designs. Also, in case you didn't know, I did try to follow themes for each week with my designs and the theme for week one was animals and space. This theme was inspired by day one's design, which was the one and only Frogo that sparked my idea for Pinto Verzaki in the first place. Dejected space frog. Hilariously enough, he came in last place in the poll, which like now that it has happened, it, it could not have been more perfect. <laughs> dejected space frog has now officially been dejected, but you know, he served his purpose. He inspired this entire project, so twas a noble sacrifice. Anyway, the winners from week one, once again, that was the galactic jellyfish, the helmet fish, and the Cosmic Kitty. 
Both the Cosmic Kitty and the Galactic Jellyfish ended up having a handful of color variations. The cat had two, uh, either black or white, um, and it also had this, these variations with this star hanging from its tail. And I asked you guys which version you liked better, and it seemed like my original concept, which was with the black cat, was most loved. And also that the star was really not needed, it kind of made it unbalanced which I totally agree, really great feedback. Especially now that it's been some time, I feel like it's just a little too heavy on the left side, because that's also the side where the tail is. Um, so good job, guys. <laughs> and funny enough, the Cosmic Kitty was actually not my favorite drawing when I first drew it. I felt like it was like too simple, and I spent not enough time on it, because that's clearly what makes good art, right? But it's definitely been one of those pieces that I have grown to really like, so I really like it now. I think it's super cute. As for the jellyfish, I could not, for the life of me, decide on a color palette. I ended up with five different versions, I think, and I honestly could have just kept going and done even more variations. Uh, but I asked you guys again which version you liked best, and it ended up being the dark purpley one. A part of me does wonder, however, if the reason you guys like that one was because it was the only one that I shared with a dark background and light lines, which makes it look kind of special and it kind of stands out. But in reality, the only reason that I put light lines was because uh, normal dark lines wouldn't show up properly against the dark purple. But in truth, uh, all the lines in all of these designs would end up being made out of metal if it was made into an actual pin so it would all look the same no matter what the colors of the actual design is then again maybe the purple truly is the nicest y'all know me I do love me some purple but regardless I don't have that much of a preference uh, like I said I could not decide on the colors and I really love the purple one as well so all's well that ends well Another thing that is slightly nerve-wracking about the jellyfish is that there are a lot of details. Possibly too many for an actual enamel pin that would be around 1 to 2 inches in size. It was a design from week 1, it was before I really got the hang of making things very simplistic. So if it does win, I would probably actually have to simplify the design a bit, maybe get rid of some of the stars in order to actually get it manufactured. But that's a battle to face if and when the time comes. We don't even know the results yet. For now, that was week one. On to week two. So the theme for week two was OCs. Yes, it probably was the most self-indulgent week because I just drew my own OCs. And the winners were Nova and Corby. For Corby's design, I just dug up the character sheet that I made for him a while ago and basically traced over one of the poses. It was my favorite pose that I had drawn of him. I love the, the wave and strut. <laughs> I did refine it a bit to make it nice and crisp so that it looks good as like a pin. Uh, but that was definitely one thing that helped during this challenge because a few of the designs were basically just an illustration that I had drawn before that I then pinified so it really helped during those days when I didn't have a whole lot of time to draw or to come up with new concepts. Also uh, that was actually kind of the general feeling of this whole challenge. It felt a lot less like drawing and more like designing. The drawing aspect was more like simply the means to get to that design, but it was really more about the design rather than the drawing, if that makes any sense. <laughs> All the drawings are pretty simple, and with digital tools like the straight line tool or the curve tool, you can get very clean looking lines and shapes without having to be super trained and great at drawing. So then the challenge doesn't really come so much from drawing itself, it really comes more from making a good design and working within the limitations of designing an enamel pin. You have to keep in mind the size that it's going to be, make sure all of your lines are thick enough, every color has to be separated by metal. Then you also have to think about costs because we're poor <laughs> over here in Sakura land. And different things that up the cost for manufacturing enamel pins, particularly size and amount of different colors or added features like chains and screen printing and yada yada yada. There's a lot of stuff to research about when it comes to enamel pins 
pins, let me tell ya. So doing this challenge felt a lot more along the lines of design, like interior design or image consulting, where you're given a set of limitations and a set limited budget and you have to get creative within them. Whereas with illustration, you're really, you're given a blank canvas and that canvas becomes whatever world you want to bestow it with. You can create anything on that canvas. But I actually really enjoyed working this way. I really enjoyed doing Pintober because I have always loved working with limitations. I think when I'm given too much creative freedom, I kind of just end up not doing anything. <laughs> because to bring it back to my statement at the beginning of this video, I'm indecisive and I can't make up my mind on something if I can do anything, which is probably the reason why I am just a dead potato on my vacation days. <laughs> now as for Nova, some of you guys may recognize her. She is one of the characters in my book Year, a collection of short stories, uh, but I created her design before I made that book. Her first appearance, I think, was actually on YouTube uh, when I was trying out some gold ink, and I just always really liked her design. I liked the gold feathers and the gold lipstick, and I felt like her design would transfer really well to an enamel pin because uh, all of those gold details could actually be made out of metal. And yeah, that was week two. The theme for week three was plants, and it is probably my favorite week overall. I think this was the point in the challenge where I really got the hang of designing pins, of working within those limitations, and also learning how to use the pen tool like a boss. But it was also before I started getting kind of drained and burnt out and wishing, praying that this freaking darn challenge was over that came in week four. <laughs> the winning designs from week three are Bonsai Tortoise and Booty Shroom. And these two actually tied in votes both on the Instagram poll and the YouTube poll. So in a way, they're actually both first place for week three. And they are also both my personal favorites from this week as well. As a matter of fact, almost all of the finalists were also my personal favorite designs from each of the weeks. So I guess we all got pretty similar tastes here in Zacky Land. I need a better name for my community. <laughs> Zacky Land. Sounds like a bootleg board game. <laughs> So, Bonsai Tortoise. This was one of the few designs I actually came up with in my sketchbook prior to the finished drawing. For the most part, I just winged this whole challenge that tends to be my main strategy <laughs> for month-long challenges. Hey, it's working out for me, so no, no. Can't, can't say nothing about it. But Bonsai Tortoise did have some prior thought to it. I thought it would be really cute to have this turtle, or tortoise in this case, uh, with stuff growing on its shell because I always felt like a turtle shell already kind of looks like a rock with moss on it. <laughs> At first I was just going to draw like random plants and mushrooms and stuff, but I had also collected these cute bonsai tree reference photos thinking I would, I don't know, do a painting with a bonsai in it sometime. <laughs> and then I was like, hey, and thus bonsai tortoise was born such an interesting story. <laughs> I'm sure it was kind of inspired by the lion turtles from Avatar The Last Airbender. Even though I didn't have them specifically in mind when I was designing Bonsai Tortoise, you just, you know, you can't be as large of a fan of Avatar as I am and just get off with saying that a turtle with plants growing on its shell is not at all zero influenced by the lion turtles. They're just so gorgeous. And then we have the booty. <laughs> It's not the boots, it's the booty. We've got Booty Shroom. There's, there's really not much to explain or talk about. It's, 
I mean, it's all out there. The meaning is very exposed. It's a very cheeky illustration, to say the least. Okay, I'll stop. I mean, really, the story is that I just ran out of plants to draw because I don't know anything about plants. <laughs> I have a single aloe vera plant named Jim dying on my windowsill right at this very moment, and that is really the extent of my plant expertise. <laughs> so I drew a mushroom which is not even a plant. <laughs> and of course, with my severely limited knowledge of mushroom varieties, I just drew the iconic red cap death mushroom thing. I don't even know what its actual name is. The Mario mushroom <laughs> that everyone is so familiar with. But then I was like, you know, I've seen this mushroom a million times. I mean, I think probably somewhere in every artist's portfolio is this mushroom. So I gotta do something out of the ordinary. And before you knew it, 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 it that's what happened. And I kind of love it. <laughs> and that is the story. <laughs> Moving on. And finally, week four, the final week. Now, technically there are four and a half weeks in a month, but to keep things simpler, I just squeezed the last three days into week four. So that poll actually ended up having 10 designs to choose from. And the winners were the Spirit Fisher and Whalefly. The theme for week four was originally going to be scenes. It was inspired by the first piece I did that week, uh, and which also happens to be one of the finalists, the Spirit Fisher. My idea was basically to do pin designs that looked like whole scenes rather than one single object. But that idea just plummeted off the cliff after two days, and I really just wanted to get to the finish line of this project. So I just started designing whatever I could still think of. But I did do the Spirit Fisher, so that is like one of the only pieces I did that actually looks like a scene. So the Spirit Fisher was inspired by one of my illustrations by the same name uh, that you guys may remember. I drew it back in July, I think, for a contest. And despite not placing in the contest, that piece was a very defining moment for me, as I mentioned in the video. It was when I realized that I'm getting a lot better with illustration and my practicing is paying off. And even though I'm completely self-taught, I can still get to a very professional level and it just made me feel very hopeful for the future and the idea of being able to one day bring the worlds that I have been building for years uh, out into the world into reality so other people can see it so I really like that piece and so I decided to do a pin design version of the spirit fisher it actually went through two different designs the first was like in a circle but I didn't like it and the cloud kind of look like a brain. <laughs> so I redesigned it to fit inside of an egg shape and I think it worked out a lot better. It was also one of the few designs that I did for Pintober that had attachments. I put these three stars dangling from the bottom. My idea is that they would be attached to the pin on jump rings, so they would actually be dangly. While doing research on enamel pins, I did see uh, so many different varieties and so many creative things. I've seen how some people make pins with chains and attachments and they glow in the dark or something and it just like it, a lot, all sorts of stuff and it just looks super cool. Uh, so I don't actually know how to go about making that kind of stuff a reality, but at least I know it's possible. <laughs> so if I need to, I will figure it out. And then of course we have the one and only Whalefly, who has now pretty much become my brand's logo or icon. I actually wasn't completely sure how well Whalefly would transfer to being a pin because one of his signature things is that his fin wings are flapping really, really fast like a fly. So whenever I draw him, I always put those whooshy lines to signify the movement of the wings, but that would not work for a pin. So I just designed it without the whoosh lines and I was like, you know what? I think it still looks all right. And yeah, 
that's the story. It's actually probably one of the few designs I designed that looks like a traditional enamel pin. It's very simple. I think I went a little overzealous with the details on many of the designs I did for Pintober, especially in the first couple of weeks before I could really get into the groove of working within such simplicity and the restrictions. And yeah, those are all nine finalists. And now it is time to vote. If you're watching this video before November 15th, 2020, then do comment down below which design you would most like to see made into an actual enamel pin. After November 15th, I will tally up all of the votes and the winning design, the one and only victorious <laughs> Pintober tournament design will get made into an actual pin. How exciting! I honestly have no clue which design it will be right now at this moment, so I'm just as curious as you guys are, especially because of how close in votes all of these designs were in the weekly poll. Pose? Poll? In the weekly polls. <laughs> in the weekly polls. So your votes really matter and I'm really excited to find out. Do keep an eye on my YouTube community page or my Instagram um, because I will most likely be posting who, which design is the winner once I have tallied up all the votes. So we will all find out together. Also, I thought I would mention that I have just launched a big shop update over on Zakira.com. There's over 20 new items in stock, including Pintober Zaki's stickers. Almost all of the 31 designs have been made into stickers, so even if your favorite designs didn't happen to make it into the finalists that you saw in this video, you can still get them as some cute weatherproof stickers. They're all handmade and hand cut by yours truly. <laughs> I have finally gotten my sticker paper situation down. After like months of trial and error and deliberating, to find my favorite papers because I am so picky. I am finally free to make however many stickers or as much as my hand will let me cut out. <laughs> I also finally, finally restocked my Gems of the Month sticker pack. The individual size of the stickers is a little smaller than before. They used to be two inches, now they're 1.5 inches, which I honestly find is a better size because they're perfect for bullet journals. And I think it'd just be so cute to use them to mark the months in the year with these little birthstone. Oh, so adorable. I also have them available as sticker sheets. Once or if those actually sell out, I don't know if I will restock them because making sticker sheets is a, uh, a little bit of a pain to do by hand, but we'll see. Also, those gem stickers are now made out of glossy paper instead of the uncoated paper I originally did uh, used. Uh, so I think they look nicer, a little upgraded. Uh, anyway, I hope you guys will take a look around. The link to my shop is in the description box. And, you know, consider shopping small this holiday season. You know, whether that's me or some other artists or craftspeople or other just small businesses in general that you really like, uh, give them some support because they work really, really hard and they really, really love what they do. And I mean, I definitely have a much, much bigger appreciation for small businesses ever since I started my uh, little shop. And I think that, you know, that kind of positive, creative, hardworking energy should be encouraged and supported. So, so sh you know, shop small, shop small this holiday season. And as for Pintober, uh, once the results are in and we have a winner, I will get to work immediately with getting it manufactured. Um, this is my very first time making an enamel pin, so there is a lot to learn and a lot to figure out. Uh, so I have no clue what the timeline will actually be for when the pin is finished and available, but hopefully by the end of the year. Maybe that's too unrealistic considering it's already November, but as soon as realistically possible for me is when the pin will be finished. So I'll keep you guys posted. I'm very excited but also very nervous so wish me luck! Wish me luck! Thank you guys so so much for supporting this project. Thank you for all of your votes. I'm so glad to have completed yet another year of October challenge insanity. <laughs> and on to the next one, am I right? So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, found it entertaining in any way, and if you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Also be sure to hit that little bell so you stay notified on upcoming videos. Before you go, be sure to leave a comment down 
down below both with your vote uh, for which pin designs also did you do any kind of drawing challenge for october this year did you do inktober or drawtober or whatever uh let me know and let me know how it went as mentioned before if you'd like to check out my shop or subscribe to my newsletter all that and more can be found over on my website zakura.com link is down below in the description box I will be back soon with another video, and until next time, stay awesome, stay inspired, always. See ya!